The Christmas break is officially over. Hockey looks to be starting soon, maybe? Uh, we'll talk about all that today on today's episode of Locked on Coyotes. Your Locked on Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Locked On Coyotes. I am Carl Pavlock. Uh, Robin is still traveling. Uh, she was on Christmas break, uh, which is why we only had pre-recorded episodes last week. Uh, joining me today, we got Patrick Brown with the Hockey Writers, the Coyotes credentialed writer for the Hockey Writers. How are you doing today, Patrick? I'm doing great, Carl. Thanks for having me on. How are you doing? Oh, can you hear me? I can. Uh-oh. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, did you get my answer? It looks like it might have froze for a minute. Apologies there, but <laughs> I, I said I'm doing well. Well, off to a off to a rousing start. But yeah, I said I was doing well. Hope you're doing well too. Hope your holiday was good. Oh yeah, uh, I can hear you now. So not sure what that was. Always Weird. love to have that. Um, <laughs> it's Christmas. Never fails when you're flying solo, Carl. Never oh. fails. Especially, and it's it's Christmas season. <laughs> there has to be some gremlins. We all know this, uh, of course. Uh, I'm doing good. I I had a good break. Um, like we were talking about before the show, it was a relatively relaxed one. Did Christmas with my family a little bit early. Uh, saved me uh time to to cover some Coyotes news. Although yeah. there wasn't too much. No. Uh, <laughs> We did get word uh, this past weekend two more Coyotes players have been added to COVID protocol, Christian Fisher and Ilya Labushkin. Uh, the NHL has also started up the taxi squad again. Uh, yep. Six players. Uh, first two players for the Coyotes, uh, Boko Iman, Iman, uh never sure if I pronounced his name correctly, and Yan Yannick. Yep. Um, it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, what did you think of the the two call ups for the Coyotes? Yeah, uh, I, yeah. You know, I think first the league had really no choice but to get the taxi squad going again. You know, you look at the fact that the league is what ninety nine percent vaccinated, whatever it is, minus Bertuzzi, right? Yeah. Um, and even with all of that, uh, all of the you know all of the players entering protocol, the league had no choice. Um, excited to see what Boko can do. He's been kind of a fan favorite since camp. Um, and, uh, I'm excited to see what he can do. And, um, Yannick, obviously he's kind of shown what he's capable of already. I think it makes perfect sense to have him up and, um, and we'll see, we'll see how the taxi squad goes. I was wondering last year if the NHL might somehow try to make the taxi squad a permanent thing. Um, I don't think it makes sense permanently just because yeah. you want to see those players getting action even at the AHL level as opposed to sitting on the taxi squad not playing but it's an interesting concept you like seeing the league adapt the way they have to to be able to continue hopefully playing some of these games um and I'm excited to see what the kids can do oh yeah definitely like I agree with you I don't think it should be permanent by any means I thought it probably should have been this year though yeah just yeah. because like it, it seems like there was always going to be the potential for COVID issues. Right. Uh, I, I don't think anyone expected them to be this bad at all. Um, which is just, uh, it, it's not been good. We've seen like right. a whole lot of games be wiped out. Um, it was funny before Robin and I started recording our, our pre episodes. We're like, okay, there's three games that are going to be coming up next time. We're sure. able to be live. <laughs> uh, none of those happened. Yeah. It, yeah. And we're still not sure if tomorrow's game against the Sharks is going right. to happen. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely agree that the league didn't really have too much they could do. Uh, I almost feel bad for the Roadrunners because just with all the <laughs> injuries the Coyotes have had and now the taxi squad, we're really taking their best players. Yeah, for sure. And, I mean, that's, you know, part of the argument B, that's what they're there for, I suppose, course, right? Yeah. To to be ready for that. But another thing that I want to call out, the league has handled this pretty well. Um, the explosion of players in COVID protocol has really been over the past couple of weeks. And obviously you got to think it's no coincidence with the rise of Omicron uh, cases that NHL players in the league has not required a booster. 
Um, so you've just seen it grow exponentially with the players who've been impacted. And all in all, um, the league seems to be handling this pretty well. They shut it down before the holiday. And, and I think one of the most important things, too, is you're seeing players in protocol, but you're not seeing players extremely sick. Yeah. You're not seeing the staff extremely sick. So um, hopefully, you know, everybody who was vaccinated leading up to it and everything else, uh, that seems to be having an impact as well and allowing players to miss the minimum 10 days and get right back in there and start playing again. So um, hopefully it's just a blip in the radar, but uh, excited to see what the taxi squad players can do, especially Boko. Been been looking forward to him getting called up for a little bit. So oh, sure. um, that'll be good to see. Yeah, uh, and I think that's definitely a good point. Um, we've definitely seen a lot of players be affected, but we haven't seen the types of serious injuries that yeah. we saw like before the season. Like when we saw players like sitting out for like a heart condition for the right. entire season, you're like, oh, this is scary. Uh, yeah. I don't want anything to do with that. But now everyone seems to be just like you know, 10 days on the protocol, right. come back in. Um, it may be that there's someone who's had like kind of – more serious adverse effects, but I haven't really heard about him, which yeah. again, definitely speaks well to it. Um, and I agree with you. I'm excited to see what Boko can do. I'm excited to see what Yannick can do. Yep. Uh, I think one of the things I talked about a lot with Robin uh, in preseason is like, you hear about Yann Yannick's physical game, but like that just doesn't really sell it until you actually start watching. Sure. And you're sure. like, oh, this kid can throw people around. Uh, yep. In a way that the Coyotes have definitely been more so this season than, yeah. I think prior, a lot of people complained about the team being soft. Definitely can't say about oh, this, this no. season's Coyotes. Definitely can't say that about this season's Coyotes. I can probably only count one or two games that I've been to where O'Brien's been in the lineup that he hasn't dropped the gloves. Um, so certainly while he was on the ice and, and you know, not injured or whatever, he you see him skating around. Um ready to be the coyotes proverbial courage if you will um right. and hopefully would would not be surprised to see uh unique continue that um that trend for the coyotes because let's face it they got to stand up for themselves yeah you know they they, they have to make sure that the other team shows a little respect because six wins in the year they're not going to get it based on the win loss column uh, that is definitely the case. They're not getting respect <laughs> anywhere else. Uh, we're going to keep talking about that and a little bit more. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. So the holiday season is still in full swing, and you should always grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, or even better than a candy bar, a Built Bar. Built Bar is filled with so much holiday goodness. It's rich and decadent flavored, covered in chocolate, and amazingly low in calories, sugar, net carbs, fat, and high in protein. You get the best of both worlds. It's delicious and healthy. There's so many flavors, you're going to have a hard time choosing. Will you go with raspberry or mint brownie? Cherry or double chocolate? Cookies and cream or peanut butter brownie? Built Bar gives you the extra fuel you need to bust down those mall doors and battle all the holiday shoppers. Or if you're standing in endless shopping lines, Built Bar can give you the extra something you need to keep going. So throw one in your jacket or purse. You never know when you're going to need to get one. Uh, like some of those other marshmallow treats around the holidays, well, don't worry. You can get your hands on Built Bar Puffs. They're light, fluffy, marshmallow through and through. Different flavors, all covered in chocolate, taste so good, you won't even believe they're filled with protein. So you can go to Built.com and use the promo code LOCK15 to get 15% over off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built. Dot com. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we have Patrick with us, and I do want to thank everybody for making Locked on Coyotes your first podcast listen of the day. Uh, maybe not this one, since it's recording a little bit late in the morning, um, but it's supposed to be a game day. Uh, you're, you're used to that, so hopefully it's not throwing you off too much. Um, so, yeah. Patrick, since this was supposed to be a game day, yeah. we are supposed to play the Kings. Uh, how, how are you feeling about the season? How would you have felt about the Coyotes versus the Kings if that game had happened? I I would have been looking forward to it, especially because it was a home game. And I just yeah. don't feel like we've had enough home games uh, this year. It just doesn't feel like it. Um, although looking at the schedule uh, in early January, it seems like the Coyotes are going to make up for some lost time. 
Yeah. Um, there's a lot of home games coming up early in the season. Um, but, you know, they had the Kings. We're supposed to have the Kings today and then uh, San Jose tomorrow. So kind of a California home and home of sorts, even yeah. though different teams. Um, not atypical, nothing that the Coyotes aren't used to. But um, it's, to me, been a matter of which Coyotes team is going to show up. Sure. And that's what I would have been looking at tonight against the Kings. And that's what I got my eyes on tomorrow, even against the Sharks, assuming that game happens. You see the Coyotes. Look, they're a six-win team. In terms of their win-loss total, uh, what has happened this season is not a surprise to no. anyone. Um, it's been painful at times. We expected it to be painful at times. But I think what really has defined what the Coyotes, when they come out with a win versus a loss is does the avalanche of goals happen or not? And it just feels like the vast majority of games, uh, they, there's the big period and not even the big period, the big five to 10 minute stretch where they just can't stop letting goals in the net. Sure. Uh, you know, you, you saw it the very first home game of the year against St. Louis with yeah. that five goal second period. And of course I happened to be out of town. I was traveling in Ohio and, just kind of keeping an eye on the score and my phone kept buzzing and I kept expecting to see the coyotes with a goal, but no, it was five goals and gosh, I want to say it was seven or eight minutes worth of time. And that was it. They were out of the game. That was pretty much it. And and that's kind of what it's boiled down to for me all season. How does this team respond to adversity? They go up quite a bit. Um, they'll grab a lead. They're no stranger to grabbing a lead, but when the opposition responds with a counter punch, how do the coyotes take that are they able to handle it or does the proverbial snowballing begin of goal after goal after goal um, and that's kind of been the big difference maker because outside of the snowball effect you've seen you know the Vimelka Wedgwood stand on their head do everything that they can do to keep the Coyotes in the games um, but without scoring a lot of goals this year they cannot afford to have that type of snowball effect that we've seen time and time again. And that's what it boils down to to me. Which Coyotes team are you going to get? The one that can respond to adversity or the one that kind of says, here we go again, and things just kind of start snowballing from there? Yeah, and, and I would agree with you. It does seem to be like eight minutes every game. The Coyotes are just looking absolutely at their worst. Yeah. Um it tends to be either in the first or second period. Uh, I think the team has had like pretty strong third periods yeah, all around. There's been there's been some rough ones, but in general, um, they look pretty good. Uh, but it really just goes to your point. Like if it, it snows balls like that early, like yeah. there's not really too much you can do. This team is not built to score. Right. Uh, there's like the one game where like they shut out the uh, yeah. The Winnipeg, Jets. Winnipeg, yeah, 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 and that was like the one time shot. they were outshot, ridiculous, like yes. thirty something or forty something, even to it was it was forty something because Vimelka's uh, he oh. tied the record for the most saves ever for a goalie's first career shutout. So it was 43, 44 saves, I think, and the yeah. Coyotes had like nineteen shots, I think, if that. So to your point, that was a prime example too of Vimelka just standing on his head. To help preserve that shutout, which was great. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but oh, no, no. you, you got me going. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> I think that was also like it was a few saves less than what Mike Smith yeah. set as the career or as the yep. NHL wide saves in a shutout. So yep. it was something impressive. Um, but yeah, th this team, like what I've often had to say is like they need to be close to perfect to win these games. And right. by that, I mean, they just need to not collapse when adversity happens. Uh, I don't think they're a very like strong mental team. Like they seem to kind of fall apart if things don't go their way, yeah. which I don't know if that's just because they know how bad they are. I don't know if they don't know how to reset. Um, yeah, ideally, it's something we would like coaching to like kind of point to and not be sure. experiencing this late in the season. Absolutely. And heavily penalized. Yes. Too. They take a lot of penalties and they take a lot of crippling late period penalties and have trouble killing it off. And nothing's worse than being up by even two or even three and giving up a goal in the last 20 seconds of the third or of the second period because of a silly penalty. And now all of a sudden you've only got a one or two goal lead heading into the third. And the Coyotes 
don't have leads of that caliber very often. So it's about staying disciplined. I think they've shown that they've adjusted to Torini's system well enough to be able to run the offense. Um, they cycle the puck really well when they're on. They, their passing has been better, but they got to stay out of the penalty box and, and man up and play a little bit better defense for sure. Yeah. Uh, and to that point, uh, a penalty I've noticed they've been getting a lot is too many men on the ice. Uh, <laughs> oh, I had to double mad. check. They did get one against the Ducks. Um, to your point, it came in a very inopportune moment. <laughs> Three minutes and a second into the third period when they were, uh, let's see, they were tied, uh, it looks like. So, yeah, like this team, they take bad penalties. At bad like, times. At bad times, but you should not be taking too many men on the ice calls. That's just no, abs- That is that's the epitome of a bad penalty beyond delay a game, flipping the puck. And there could be an argument to be made even for a good delay a game penalty if there's been sustained pressure and you're just trying to clear the puck. There is no good time to yeah. take too many men. Now that said, too, one of the other too many men calls that came against the Rangers, in which the the Coyotes blew a very late lead against the new york rangers uh, at home a couple of weeks ago and andre torini was livid because there have been you know there have been some not dicey calls but almost borderline calls that you just you almost feel like the tampa bay lightning don't get called for that you know things like that there have been some borderline calls but guess what when you're the tampa bay lightning i guess you've earned the benefit of the doubt just like Nolan Ryan painting the corners and, and getting one outside goal to strike every now and then, you know? Yeah. Um, so there's something to be said for that. But Torini has lamented quite a bit um, uh, the team's discipline and their ability to stay out of the box. So hopefully that's a trend uh, moving into the new year. Yeah, that's definitely the one thing I want Torini to address. Like the team's discipline, like that's one of the things where I'm like, coaching needs to step in. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're right. Uh, I think the Coyotes have been on on the line for a lot of these calls. But I have a friend who I like to talk to about hockey, and she will often be like, "Oh, I can't believe that was a penalty. That shouldn't have been a call. Like you mm-hmm. see, other teams get away with that." I'm like, "Yeah, but the Coyotes also know, and they can't be putting themselves in those kind of situations. They yep. do not have the benefit of the doubt. They need to be playing extra, extra good, uh, because I mean." Unfortunately, that's just the way things are. That's yeah. what they need to do to play. And they need to kind of like step up and be like, yeah, we're just going to take this. We're not going to take these dumb calls. It doesn't exactly. matter what the refs say. Uh, but this exactly. is good stuff. Uh, we got one more segment. We're just going to keep talking about the state of the Coyotes. Um, just kind of see where we go from here because there's definitely a lot more. But first, one more quick word from our sponsors. So... Bet online has you covered this holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues its march to the College Bowls and the pro football playoffs. Uh, Bet online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head over to our new website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code LOCKEDON to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, right down to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. So don't wait to take advantage of the new amazing offers available. Bet online, where the game starts. All right. And one more time, this is Carl Pavlock with Patrick Brown joining me of the Hockey Riders. Robin is out, but she should be back for tomorrow's episode, where we will potentially be talking about the San Jose Sharks. <laughs> uh, who knows? Um, but that's kind of kind of brings me to my next thing. What do you expect for the Coyotes in the second, uh, I don't want to say half of the season? <laughs> Uh, I think we just covered like our third of the way through the season yeah. stuff, but in in what's left of the season, anyways. Yeah. What do you expect from the Coyotes between now and what was supposed to be the Olympics break, which is no longer the Olympics break? No longer the Olympic break, and even though the league initially said they were not going to play any makeup games, it seems like they are absolutely going to be using those three weeks to be playing makeup games now. Now they're in a much different situation with all the cancellations that they had to do, but that's all. That's a conversation for another time, Carl. So yeah, um, in term in terms. In terms of what we're looking at the rest of the year, I think you know exactly what to expect, and it's going to be a lot of what we've gotten. Not a whole lot of winning. No. 
Um, hopefully we see a couple of feel good stories. I mean, how great has the Wedgie Veggie tandem been to watch? They're not going to be going winning any, any goaltending awards, no. any tandem awards or anything like that. But every now and then they have a game, they make a save that just, it makes you feel good. Um, considering where things started. So I'm hoping for some feel-good stories. I'll certainly be keeping my, my eye on the WHL, specifically the Edmonton Oil Kings, to watch Dylan Gunther. Because um, if you ever need to smile, either A, tune into the World Juniors right now and watch Gunther on Team Canada, um, or B, tune into the WHL and watch the Edmonton Oil Kings and that stacked roster um, and it'll make you feel good about the Coyotes future because at the end of the day, uh, I, I hate to be such a downer right after Christmas, but there's just not a whole lot to look forward to. You're going to oh, be seeing no. a lot of losses. You're going to be seeing a lot of ugly losses and that doesn't even feel worth it because there is no guarantee that they're going to end up with the number one overall pick through the draft lottery. They may have the best odds. It's looking like they're going to have the best odds by far. Um, but there's no guarantee. So like even cheering on losses doesn't feel that worthwhile because you're still at the mercy of, of the lottery at the end of the day. Um, so I would say things to cheer for, get on board and start cheering for the Canadians because their <laughs> draft be pick, <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I had higher expectations for that draft pick and it's looking like that's going to be where it stands right now, a top 10, meaning. Um, Arizona is going to receive that be Carolina's pick instead, Carolina's right? First round pick. Yep. Not as promising <laughs> as uh, what the Canadians appeared to be. So I'd encourage everybody to get on board and start cheering on the Habs for some wins. Um, and and yeah, other than that, watch your players develop. Keep your eyes in Tucson and see who's setting themselves apart from the literal and proverbial pack um, with the Roadrunners and get excited about some of the kids and, and what to watch for. Because other than that, there's just not a ton to be cheering for right now. Yeah. Uh, I will say I have been enjoying just, I always thought the Habs were a bit of a presumptive team. Oh, they like, are. Oh, no doubt. They, Their fan base is brutal. In general. <laughs> yeah. But they really thought that they took that next step with that lucky Oh, yeah. Day. And I am kind of laughing just watching them fall to earth. Uh, if oh, there wasn't sure. a pick involved, I would be like, <laughs> ah, this is beautiful. But Yeah, you know, outside, outside of Arizona, I can't think of anybody who feels bad for them. <laughs> um, it's... I, I am I am encouraging your loyal fan base to cheer on the Habs solely for the purpose of like in an ideal situation win just enough to earn the eleventh pick and everybody wins there uh, yeah. you know so um, I I couldn't agree more and couldn't <laughs> this type of season couldn't happen to um, a more uh, well a better fan base I'll just leave sure. it at that but sure. uh, but yeah it, it makes sense. Uh, I, I'm kind of curious about this. I think we're going to see some moves uh, sooner mm. rather than later because yeah. this team is definitely like, you know, Phil Castle is not going to be here at the end of the year. No way. Um, there's been more talk about Chikrin. No, I don't, I don't, you're going to yeah. get me. You will get me going next level if we start talking about that because that, you know, Elliot Friedman, love the guy. A clickbait worked like magic and... <sighs> Uh, to be fair, I've been the beneficiary of that as well because all yeah. I got to do is put Chikrin's name in something and everybody's all over it. So, um, I look, I, I don't see that happening yeah. unless it's a deal so ridiculous that we're happy to see him leave because it was just the most obscene deal we've ever seen Bill Armstrong make. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think just in general when talking about Chikrin, uh, because I am always of the mindset that anyone can be traded. Of course. Wayne Gretzky was traded. Anyone of course. can be traded. Absolutely. Um, but this would be the absolute worst season to trade Jacob Chikrin. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Because his value is just so low. Agreed. For reasons that I think everyone understands, like he's mm -hmm. adjusting to a first spot defenseman role for the first time in his career. Yep. He's still really young. The team sucks. He yep. just lost his major defensive partner. They've like been no continuity between teams. So absolutely, yeah. he's uh, he's on such a team friendly deal. You're looking at under five million for the next yeah. three seasons after this. Uh, I mean, in order to make 
pull the trigger on that type of deal. It will take a king's ransom, and everybody else around the league will end up scratching their heads, wondering why somebody gave that up for a 23-year-old defenseman, where yeah. he's he's set along with Keller to basically be one of the cornerstones of this rebuild and be entering the prime of his career in four or five years or so with potentially a really good Coyotes team. Fingers crossed at that Fingers time. Fingers crossed, yeah. Um, if, if the rebuild goes correctly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, and to your point, Kessel, you got to think he's gone at the deadline. Some team's going to take him. You may not get a whole lot in return. He's not exactly having a career year, but I, I don't think it would be silly to hold on to him at this yeah. point. Um, there's there's no need to hold on to him. You take what you can get. If that's a third rounder, so be it. You take what you can get. Uh, I think another one who may be interesting to keep your eye on would be Shane Gostaspear. He's having a bit of a career renaissance and very, very happy for him the yeah. way things ended in Philly for him to come and be a team leader in points and really on the blue line um, helping this team navigate some very, very difficult uh, waters and and he knew what he was getting into. You got to think in a situation like that, Bill Armstrong is able to pull these players aside and say, "Look, you're getting up there. You're a, an established veteran of the league now. Um, you're not going to be part of the rebuild. I can tell you that right now. So go out there, have a career year, so that we can deal you, or that when your contract's up at the end of next season, because I think he signed through two more, right? Uh, this season uh, and next, I, I think." He may only have one year left, but I thought he's got... Anyway, regardless, whenever your contract's up, you're playing for your next contract. Shane Gostaspear is playing for his next contract, and if, if Armstrong can end up eking out a couple of prospects in the interim out of that, I think that's a huge win. So he would be another player, I'd say, to keep your eye on um, in, in potential trade uh, deadline trade talks. So Gostaspear has one more season after this. Um, Still got it, baby. Yeah. <laughs> he will be 30 uh, when his contract's up, which okay. is not bad. No, uh, he's, he's younger. He God, it feels like he's really been in the young. league a long time, doesn't he? Oh, he has. Yeah. <laughs> I, should uh, know, he, I should know that he's only going to be 30, but it just it feels like he's uh, almost like a 34, 35-year-old veteran. So he's still got some really serviceable years and – um, and again, I think he knows that. And I'm sure Armstrong was very upfront um, upon his arrival in Arizona that, look, you're not playing for the future of this franchise. You're playing for the future of Shane Gostaspear. So go out there and see what you can do. Um, and, and he's doing it. And I'm happy for him. And I think he's going to end up with a contender. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of hope the the team six them around just to have like that secondary offensive pu push from Absolutely. the blue line. I, I think he could serve a purpose for this team. Uh, and I think he may want to just because we've seen players who like get a change of scenery. They really like it. And they're yeah. like, you know what? I'm going to stick around. And considering the fact that the coyotes got a second round pick in order to acquire yeah. his contract. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that deal's worked out well. Uh, I can only imagine how much the Flyers fan base is kicking themselves right now. Sure. I, I think I saw that they had three players who were brought in with the money that they saved on Gostaspare's contract, and Gostaspare has more than all three of them put together in points. Yep. So yep. just And you certainly me. you don't expect to see that with him here. You just no. I, I did not my expectations for him weren't that high and and, um, you know, to your point, uh, we'll see if Philly's kicking themselves over it or not. But if Armstrong can take him after taking on a pick, just after getting a pick, just to take on his contract. Yeah. If Armstrong can turn around and flip him for more. Ooh. I mean, that's an unbelievable return on that deal of just taking on. And you could retain half of Gostas. They've got so much room. Like you could easily retain Gost half of Gosta Spears' contract for next season if you need to, if that'll sweeten the deal to to bring somebody in, um, to bring draft picks in or more assets or whatever. But one thing I want your viewers to remember too: keep in mind Armstrong doesn't have to make a deal for the sake of making a deal. They've got eight picks in the first two rounds coming up, including three first rounders and five second rounders. So that's the other thing with the Chikrin deal: Armstrong doesn't have to make a deal. They are sitting very pretty as it relates to assets. Now, yeah, two of those first rounders are panning out. We were talking about Montreal before, and yeah, they're and everything gonna be probably else. later. Yeah. Right. But even so, they're still first rounders. And I don't know a GM in the league that would turn their nose at getting three first rounders, regardless of where they are in the draft. So um, especially yeah. for a deep draft. 
Yeah, which exactly. Is it's supposed to be so like, exactly a first rounder in like a relatively light draft. Maybe this one should be different. Yeah. Uh, but that's gonna do it for us. Uh, Patrick, tell the people where they can find you. Hey, I, I appreciate you having me on. Certainly check out my articles, thehockeywriters.com. Um, I'm I'm going to all the home games um, and, and reporting on those. And then shameless plug here, but we've got our podcast, Howlers and Growlers. Carl, I know you've been on a few times and oh, yeah. I am always enjoy having you on. So um, check us out at Howlers THW or my Twitter's at P Brown Hockey. And um, really appreciate you taking the time and having me on, Carl. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Patrick's been had good enough to have me on twice, so definitely check him out. Check out the podcast. Uh, you can always follow us on uh, LO underscore Coyotes. You can follow me personally at Carl Pavlock FFH. But that's going to do it for today. Hope you guys had a good time. Hope you uh, are enjoying the season coming up. Hope you guys are staying safe. And don't forget to howl on.